Thank you for joining us on the latest episode of Collider Connected. Uh, Thank you. For which, me. Yeah. Um, so I got I got to start with the most important thing. Uh, how much did you debate what you wanted behind you during this live interview? <laughs> there was some thought. Uh, I you know I I don't know. It's 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 the place I live in has either just it's a ton of old like wood from the early 80s or stock uh, or or a bunch of rocks uh, rock walls so it's so it's you know this is kind of a, a mixture of both We've got plenty of rocks and then some some uh, some wood so i don't know it's it's kind of a dungeon feel no, I got whatever i choose because this part of the dungeon uh, of course, I'm sure, like all of us, you've been having to, you know, social distance and, you know, stay home for a while. Uh, how, what have the last few weeks been like for you? Uh, you know, I've been uh, just staying in. I've, I've, I've left, gone outside the driveway three times, twice to just take trash uh, to the dump and do recycling because it was kind of building up. And, and that's a long story. It's a, a particular garbage uh uh thing in my neighborhood sorry i got a bunch of dogs running around here too so uh so hopefully there aren't a bunch of barking sounds and then the other time was just to go on this i just had to get out of the house for a second so i went to this very remote area and and walked around uh just to, to get a little a little air but you know it's been a lot of keeping in touch with friends and family making sure my family's doing all right you know my trying to keep my mom indoors so so want to make sure that she's uh, feeling a, a, a connected uh and and so she doesn't get uh doesn't feel the need to go outside of her house and same same with my dad and yeah it's it's uh that's a weird weird and scary time uh just you know well, how, about, how about you uh, working, just working from home, you know, just trying to, uh, you know, everything you said, it's just, it's just a really strange time. And, um, I'm hopeful that we can find some sort of treatment as a society to allow us to reemerge, um, you know, and, uh, I'm, you know, it's tough. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, I mean, that, that part of it is going to be such a, tri you know, it's, it's, there are so many people who, already are having such a hard time getting by b before this. So, so th this, you know, obviously just uh, throws so much at them and, and, you know, ho hopefully this is something that makes us realize what, what people are going through and what, you know, what, hopefully there's a change that, that, you know, for, for the better that, that comes through this because, you know, obviously there's so much horrendous suffering and, and loss. This is, it's just the worst. I couldn't agree more. Let's switch yeah. subjects into, uh, let's bring the smiles and uh, we'll switch subjects. No, let's is... stay in the downer stuff. <laughs> um, in, a, in another reality, a few days ago, you and I and Yorma and a few others would have celebrated the 10th anniversary MacGruber screening at Arclight Hollywood. We... We put tickets on sale. It sold out in like two hours or something crazy in the Cinerama Dome. And all of us were so excited to do it. And then obviously this happened, um, which is pretty, it's pretty crazy to realize it would have been a few days ago. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I, I did mark in my mind the day that it was supposed to be, it would have been uh, Sunday night. And, and I put, you know, I put a piece of celery in my butt as a, a my own little tribute to what could have been. I was planning uh, on doing it in front of everybody. No, I, was, I wouldn't want to. <laughs> um, I I, know. Right, exactly. Uh, I don't want to spoil any surprises that we had planned or uh, uh, that Yorma and I had talked about, but um, what, what actual props or things do you still own from the movie? Well, I have uh, the two main things uh, are the Miata. Uh, I, we, Yorma and John and I bought that uh, together um, for like dirt cheap. They they were just going to give it away. And then the other main thing that I I uh, have is the uh, KFBR three nine two notebook, the notepad with all the clues and the the just the 
the irate ramblings and doodles. Uh, so those, those are the two main things. I do have um, one of the outfits and one of the wigs also. So it's like, I don't know if that, there, there must be a couple different wigs and I know there are, you know, three or four different outfits and in case you have to stain one of them. And uh, uh, yeah, so those are the, those are the main things. And then a bunch of memories. <laughs> um, I don't want to give away things that uh, Yorm and I had talked about, but one of the things you mentioned, we had talked about trying to get to the arc light uh, to have fans be able to take pictures. Trying to, this secret thing, trying to get the battery started again. And all that stuff. Put air in the tires. All, uh, yes. Thing that we would, aren't going to spoil. But right. <laughs> <laughs> no, we had talked about that. We we had talked about you know, well we we had some we had some plans. So it, it you know hopefully this is something that that uh, once once things uh, get back to a, a, a more of a, a semblance of of normalcy, uh, we can start thinking about about a redo of this because you know we we really were looking forward to it and, and uh, we're we're so excited about it. Obviously, the easiest call in the world to shut it down because it was just not the not the right time for it and and people need to stay safe but but we do really look forward to to at some point doing it again it might be the year 2025 but uh you know we'll do it at some point a hundred percent it's happening as soon as we can um so i'm in i'm growing a beard because of the pandemic and staying at home because why the hell not um i was always impressed with your last man on earth beard and then when you shaved half of it off uh, it was unbelievable. Um, so my question for you is, what was it like actually growing that beard and then actually shaving half of it off and like going out in normal society? Uh, growing the beard was a big deal for me just on its own because I had never really had any kind of big beard. I, I had a, a a manicured beard for a part that I did in this, in this little Irish movie called run and jump. But that was the most I'd ever done. And I was, it had filled in a little more than I thought was possible. So once we started doing the last man on earth, I thought, Oh, I'm just going to let it go. I just, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't shave if, if I was the only person on earth. So, so I'll just see what happens. I had no idea that I could grow such a thickster and, uh, yeah, so it 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 really came in, and and then finally I got used to how to eat with a beard and do all this stuff, and then I shaved off the half of it, and it was that was I mean, people already with as bushy and unkempt as the full beard was were a little I I appeared kind of sketchy to them already, so when you then take half of it away and it's just complete hairlessness on one side of the face and then uh, that bushiness on the other side of the face. It's, it's the mark of someone who's, who's, a, who's trouble. You, you, like I would, I would be walking down a street and like a sidewalk and I could see two blocks down people coming up and then crossing that I could see them notice me and then cross to the other side of the street. It was that level of, of uh, fear based on the crazy choice that was made. Cause they didn't know that, Oh, this is, this is for my job. They just thought this was for my, it just a choice that I had made. Did you, when you did the, the half shave, did you know at that point how long the half shave was going to last or was it after you shaved that you realized I can't keep this up like this. This this plot point needs to end sooner than I thought. No, I was I was actually really excited to do it. Um, it it was I just thought the joke was was a, a really good one. So I I it was well worth the the uncomfortable aspects that I, of, of wearing it around for a month. So yeah, I knew that it was going to be a month i was the one who pitched the idea so i was I, there was nobody to blame but but myself and then i was excited to shave it off like it was you it's it's an experience that not a lot of people get to have having 
that kind of crazy hairdo. So I, I looked on it as an adventure. And I, as I said, I liked the joke for the show. But then at the end of the four weeks, I was ready to shave it off. And it felt really good to get that thing off. But then, you know, a couple, couple uh, years later, we, it came back for another two weeks. And that was, again, I think I was the one who pitched the, the, the half beard coming back. So I have nobody to blame but myself. But but this time it was only going to be for two weeks, which I thought was was a bearable amount of time. Yeah, that that seems realist. That seems okay. Um, I when uh, when I've been talking to people recently, I've been asking a lot of people some quick rounds of questions. I'm going to try to hit you up with a few real quick. Do you okay. remember your Do you remember your first movie or TV show crush? Uh, the first thing that came up was every woman from charlie's angels and probably diane uh uh wait diane ladd diane no diane ladd is is no diane ladd is no, cheryl ladd cheryl ladd was, was my particular uh favorite I'll, although as i got older jacqueline smith it, it changed to jacqueline smith uh but i would uh, cut out okay sorry i'm making this long go to your next one it's fine. I want to go on for like 45 minutes on, on Charlie's Angels. Right. Well, we, we understand you enjoyed Charlie's Angels. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Question. Uh, right. Um, what TV show would you love to guest star on right now? Angels. <laughs> Charlie's <laughs> Angels. No, Charlie's Angels. Uh, would I like to uh, guest star on? Oh, man. Uh, uh, I, you know, I don't watch a, a ton of TV. So the, the, one of the only shows I watch is Succession. Friggin love it so much. It's so it's so good. Oh, Big Mouth, doing a voice on Big Mouth. I love that show. There, I, I mean, there are a ton of great shows out there. It's not it's not because no show interests me. It's it's that there are so many shows that I somehow have missed that I don't know where to start. So it's like I still have the entire Game of Thrones out there that I've never seen. Um, you know, even my favorite shows, I, th I think the only two series that I've watched through the whole run of the show were Cheers and Breaking Bad. Other than that, I'm just, I mean, unless it was like a shorter run thing. Completely. Do you, what, do you, what movie do you think you've seen the most? Uh... Jaws. Okay. That's the one, whenever, you know, there are a couple where if, if you see a scene from, from Jaws, or everyone has that movie that's when they see it on TV, they just got to stop whatever they're doing and just watch it till the end. So I'm always hopeful that it's toward the end of Jaws because if, if I get sucked into the beginning of Jaws, it's just, I got to reconfigure my whole work week because there's like two hours of stuff that that just gets shelved Com completely it's like like if uh shawshank comes on and i'm flipping the channels forget it i was that was another one i was gonna say shawshank yeah the other night we watched uh uh the fugitive which was another one completely um you work if i'm not mistaken you worked as a writer on late show with david letterman back yeah. in the 90s yes um, and this is before you were acting. Uh, I'm curious, how did you get that job? And maybe how did that impact your writing and what you wanted to do from there? Well, it, 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 that, that show uh, impacted my writing before I got there in a major way. That was one of, David Letterman was one of my main influences. So I, you know, when I was probably 12 or 13, I discovered the show uh, when it was over on NBC and would just stay up. My parents would let me stay up and watch it. And it just, there's so much amazing, weird stuff uh, that, that really spoke to me, the absurdity of it. And, and uh, you know, so that mixed with uh, SNL, mixed with uh, uh, Monty Python and, and Steve Martin, uh, uh, SCTV, all those things that kind of was what what kind of formed my 
my my comedy uh, tastes. Uh, so so to get a chance to to write on that show was just a dream come true. It was a really hard job, and I don't think I did a great job of it. Uh, I feel like if I had, it was my, it was my second job. I had, my first job was at the uh, the, uh, the Jenny McCarthy show, which was a sketch show on MTV, and a relatively uh, it was a good kind of low pressure job to start, uh, and and then the stress of doing a, a nightly show was pretty overwhelming for for where I was at comfort wise with pressure and stress and and I, I really wish I could go back now after having a bunch of a bunch more experience because I think part of the, part of it was the mental side of it where I just was stressed out all the time and and uh but it was such an honor to be a part of that show and uh, you know I will be forever grateful that's that's why I, those you know two of as I said Letterman and SNL were two of my main pillars and the fact that I got to work at both of them is I mean what a what a blessing so you know I've I've always thought like after being able to work at both those jobs everything else was gravy uh because you know this very very few people get to get to actually experience their their dream and I got to experience two of them so so uh yeah when when you were doing Letterman uh, were you thinking at that time, I want to be in front of the camera, I want to be a performer, or were you thinking, uh, you know, I'd be fine just being a writer? Well, uh, at that point, I had started at the Grounds, uh, which is an improv theater in, in Los Angeles. Uh, a lot of people have come from, from there. Uh, but so when you're starting, I think your your main goal, or at least back then, the main goal when you're at the Groundlings is to get a job on SNL, or or that was that was what what why I went there was like oh that that would be the just the top of the you know that of the list of potential things that could come out of going to the Groundlings. Being at SNL was right at the top of that. So so when I started getting writing jobs, uh, right about the the time that I was going through that Groundling system and and got through the system and got to start performing on stage, I still had um, some aspirations of, of acting. Um, after Letterman, then I went to, uh, after I, or should I rephrase it and say, after I got canned at Letterman, uh, I came back and started writing for different sitcoms. And after a couple of years of that, I got, I got into the, uh, the uh, world of the, uh, Carsey Werner world, uh, but specifically Bonnie and Terry Turner, um, who did uh, Third Rock from the Sun, and then and then uh, so I worked on there for a little bit, and then when that was uh, when they finished that series, I I got moved over to the '70s show, which was also Bonnie and Terry Turner uh, with Mark Brazil. Well, Mark Brazil was the you know the the boss of that, but he was you know he started it with Bonnie and Terry, so. Um, at that point, I finally had a, a job where there was some kind of stability because it's writing is tough. You just, it's so many shows don't make it you get on a show and you think everything's great and you are proud of it. And then all of a sudden it just gets canceled after 13. So finally I got to a, a place where there was some stability and, um, I just thought, oh, I could. I could do this. The the acting stuff was just, just started fading away. And I thought I was just going to write. And I was totally happy with that. And that, but then I would still be doing groundling shows from time to time. And the, and then Lauren Michaels came to one of those and kind of kicked me back into the having acting aspirations. Uh, I want to jump into why I get to talk to you today, which is your new Quibi series flipped. Um, it's a it's a completely different thing because it's it's made for your phone it, and you can watch it either horizontally horizontally or vertically depending on yeah. how you want to do it. Um, so talk a little bit about how you um, ended up like how did this come to you? How did this series happen? 
Well, I, I, uh, one of the producers, uh, from the last man on earth, uh, uh, this guy, Seth Cohen, who, uh, is wonderful. And we obviously kept in touch after the show got canceled. Um, he had, he was the first person who uh, told me about Quibi. And so he said, we were thinking about things we could do together. And he said, you should go in, we should go in and learn more about this. Cause they're, they were really doing a bunch of cool stuff. So I went in with Seth and my buddy, John Solomon, who was, the, we worked on last man on earth together and McGruber and, you know, a bunch of stuff. So we went in for a, just a general meeting to meet them and see what they were up to. And they explained a lot of uh, the different interesting technological stuff that they were doing and just about the projects also that, that uh, they're working on. And it sounded really cool. And at about that same time, I had two friends from the groundlings that I was just talking about, Damon Jones and Steve Mallory who had written flipped. And so they, that the, the offer to do flipped came in right about that time. And so I, I already had heard from, from these people at Quibi, just what, how cool everything, it, the, the new technology and the innovations. And that was interesting to me. And then I read this super funny script that these guys were doing that these guys that I've known for years happened did that did i answer your question a little bit? yeah you cut out a little bit at the end there there was a bad reception thing it was the best answer i've ever given to any question i i, I we basically got it that um it, it uh groundling friends you'd already gone in um but i'm curious because when you're watching it just for people that don't realize masturbation what? Did you hear the public masturbation part of the? Uh, we we missed that, but oh, you missed that. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, uh, for people that don't realize, though, you can watch the 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 series like this, or you can watch the series like this. And when you're watching it like this, it's a completely different framing. So I'm just curious: uh, was there any difference on set when you were filming, um, or was that kind of altering of the framing done in post production? Um, definitely, uh, as actors, I, I never, uh, was aware of, of any kind of difference in how we shot stuff. I, I, I don't know that Caitlin was either the director of the show. Ryan Case is amazing. And she had everything so nailed down and so thought out. Um, so they, I'm sure that they planned for that. Uh, a bunch before going into production, but but when you know we, the the lighting setups were super fast, I still don't know the. We, we, it didn't seem like we ever really got anything a second time just for the different angle. There might have been once or twice. Now that I think about it, but it really was to from the acting standpoint. I didn't even really know they were you know, that when we would be doing stuff for a horizontal shot and when we'd be doing stuff for a vertical shot. I think they just were setting up for that from the get-go. Um, yeah, but it's, it's and there, it's so interesting because I think there are a, a bunch of cool uses uh, for the different shots. Like for different shows, you know, for I think a lot of the shows you're seeing, um, like like for ours, you're just seeing a vertical shot of the same scene but then there are some shows that i think are using those different shots for like like when they explained it to us you could oh the horizontal could be the actual scene that's going on the vertical could be some completely different element which is tied to the horizontal if that makes sense sure. So I don't even know what shows are are making use of, of of the technology in that way, but it was super cool the the things that that could occur uh, in Quibi shows, and and you know I think that as as uh, as more and more people catch on to Quibi and Quibi, it, you know I think that there, it, the the use of that uh, of of the tech technological stuff and that that kind of innovation, I think it will just grow and just people. 
find funkier and funkier uses of that. I hate asking you a generic question like all about funk. I, I hate asking you the generic uh, kind of question, but a lot of people watching this right now will have not seen Flipped yet, and maybe haven't even seen a trailer yet. Um, so can you, I know, they're assholes, seriously. You know, um, uh, uh, can you sort of give like, but for people that like are fans of yours, um, what what's the what's the show about? Uh, the show is about two down on their luck people, a married couple, uh, Jan and Cricket Melfi. I play uh, Jan Melfi, and uh, Caitlin Olson plays Cricket Melfi. And we get fired from our jobs, have no idea what the hell we're supposed to do with our lives. We don't know what our destiny is. We do love uh, uh, flipping house flipping shows, so we decide to try to buy a house and flip it and kind of make our own little uh, home flipping show just on our own uh, cameras. And, and it, things go not so well and develop in a way, I don't want to give away any spoilers, but it's, it, it, you know, I think it's 11, different segments and each one ends with a pretty, pretty fun cliffhanger. And it just gets, it just unravels more and more throughout. So it's, uh, it, is that, a, it, does that sound like a good, it's, you know, it, it goes to, it gets to pretty dark places, uh, but still is a, a comedy. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, I, I love it. I, it was so much fun to do. I had never gotten to work with Caitlin Olson, and she's amazing. Arturo Castro is in it, and he's amazing. Um, and then uh, Andy Garcia and Ava Longoria are in it also. So uh, those are spoilers. Those are spoilers. All three of those are spoilers. Yeah, I think the acting, it's pretty much, it's out there. But one of the things, and I, I know I'm running out of time with you, but Caitlin is so funny, and you are so funny, and I'm curious, what is it like when you put the two of you, yeah, you, you can make people laugh. What is it like when you put the two of you guys together on set? And is there like a mission between the two of you to like make each other break? We, we did not talk on set. We do not get along. Um, so it was, that was tough. Uh, it was easy. I would spite laugh at her sometimes to ruin her takes. Um, no, oh my God. I had met her one time coming out of a party her and Rob, and uh, it was basically like a 30-second, uh, hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. And, and so this was the first time getting to know her, and for sure the first time I ever got to work with her. She is so freaking funny. It really is tough not to, to ruin scenes. I mean, she just is incredible it really was an amazing time uh get, getting to do that and just a super cool person uh so yeah it was it was just a blast and then just everyone on set was great arturo castro do you know him are you are you... uh no he he uh refuses to talk to me on a regular basis i'm always trying to talk but uh he's difficult he is it's the same he just an incredibly talented super funny just funny to the bone. And, By the way, and, I'm joking, just to be clear. <laughs> I'm like, just for people, I just realized, I'm, I better say I'm joking. I know, you, you gotta be, you gotta be safe, right? Um, but just, just a, also a delightful person. So it's, it's so fun when, when you get to work at a place where you're working with people who are really good at what they do and also really nice people, that's, you know, every job should be like that. Unfortunately, every job is not like that, but you know, the cast, the whole crew, uh, Ryan, the director, she's just amazing. Um, uh, what, he was what is, he having to friggin' do all this stuff and and carry around this this uh, baby inside her, yeah, like it was. It, she's just this force of positivity and and knowledge and good taste. She's just amazing. So it was awesome. 
I saw the first three episodes, and one of the things I really loved is that you guys have a really loving relationship. You know, you guys really love each other, and it's about the two of you, you know, teaming up, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. You know? it, it, yeah. That, that, that's a big part of it. Um, it, it was really a fun d- dynamic. Uh, the, the writing is so good, too. See, you know, Stephen Damon, who I was talking about, they just wrote some really fun, you know, d- delightful, dark, really stupid in, in the best possible way. Stupid is one of my, my all time, uh, uh, compliments, uh, d- depending on usage. And this is, this is, this usage is, is, uh, uh, the good, the good kind, but it's just like, it was so fun. Nothing but fun doing this stuff. Now I forget the question. I went on too long talking about. Uh, I'm basically how I use stupid. I'm basically out of time, but I really, if you don't mind, uh, the people that work at Collider's gave me a few questions to ask. Can we zoom through them really fast, and then oh, yeah. I'll. I just want to make sure. No rush. Um, no, no. I, I, you say that. Um, so uh, Greg wanted to know. Um, you always commit a hundred percent when performing. Uh, have you ever taken it too far? And if so, when? Have you ever taken it too far? Um, I, I, I would, the, the main times that I would say w- would be, that I would be in danger of taking it too far would be if I'm supposed to, like, if I'm really you know, going nuts in a scene and then I have to like grab somebody. Sometimes you just don't realize how hard you're grabbing somebody or, you know, you just, you've got all this blood coursing through your veins because you're doing this insane over the top, uh, uh, scene. And then, and then you maybe, you know, are more forceful with somebody than you should be. And so that I, I, I can't remember any specific time. I'm sure there's right when I get off, there's going to be something that, that, uh, that I go, Oh, I should have said that. But so I'm, so I'm sorry to disappoint Greg. This was a shit answer to a wonderful question. Um, Allie wanted to know, can you, as your last man on earth character, Phil, give us any words of wisdom on how to handle this current movement in time? I mean, Margarita pools, uh, and uh, you know, toilet pools. It's all about using your pools in smartly, smartly. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it is very interesting, you know, not to make light of the the situation because it is you know, very devastating what's going on. But like the there are certainly elements that I see now in what's going on in, in the world that, that seem to play out in the same way that, that it seemed played out in the show. And, and, and I would have thought that maybe it was um, uh, that we were exaggerating stuff, like, like um, going through grocery stores and the empty shelves and stuff like that, barren, barren shelves. Uh, I don't know. I just, I guess I just didn't ever think that kind of stuff would happen. And, and it's, you know, um, yeah, it's, very, it's a, it's a, it's such a, it's such a weird time. And I, I, you know, my heart goes out to everybody who's, who's going through this, which is everybody. So. Um, Adam would like, Oh, sorry. Oh, I just said sending love to the world. Um, Adam would like an oral history on how the celery up your butt plot point came to be in MacGruber. Okay, this this had nothing to do with me actually because we were I remember we were in my apartment in New York. I you know the I like holes scene, um, and those guys were just watching for inspiration, some, some old MacGyver uh, episodes. And they got to this one episode where he's, you know, getting together a bunch of tools and 
and then he's got there's also a carrot there and whoever is with him says what are you, how are you going to use the character and he just says i'm hungry and takes a bite of the carrot so from that that was somehow from that they envisioned this scene where i use a piece of well i was using a carrot putting a carrot in my butt as a distraction and then as we were going through the process of you know seeing if the lawyers would would let us do this because i think macgyver was was uh um they sent us a cease and desist or 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 they clearly were not super excited that we were making a movie out of it um but to make sure that because it was really the just the carrot things just didn't seem in any way like you you couldn't possibly go oh they got this thing from macgyver because you know they would never put a carrot in macgyver's butt um but just to make sure there was no, no tie-in at all we changed it to celery which i think was easier to hold in my um in my taint because that is a uh I I, if people think that that thing is going anywhere near my actual butthole they're wrong i mean it crests against the the areas it's close to the butthole but it's not like there's no part of it that's inserted into the butthole it's Closer to the this end of the stock is probably closer to the base of my balls. Uh, <laughs> and by the way, when we first got to Albuquerque, one of the first things we did was we were just like, shit, we need to make sure that this looks like we got to figure out how to do this. So we were one night he had brought uh, Yorma, bought a bunch of celery and then took it. We, we just workshopped it. And you know, a couple of days later, I saw I saw there was this video going around that, unbeknownst to me, Yorma had videotaped this thing, and and you know, th- this this private moment of me, you know, putting this salary in my butt, and uh, and he uh, near my butt rather, and uh, right. was sent it around to all of our friends, who of course told their two best friends and their two best friends. Oh, and one more thing about the celery. This this is later. This just made me think of uh, this bit of information, which was uh, the day of the celery scene. My mom was visiting with two of her friends, and so she was saying, "Well, I think we're going to come in the morning," and. And the celery scene was to be shot in the morning. She said, we're going to come in the morning and watch you work. And then we're going to go to Santa Fe in the afternoon. I said, what would you think about switching that around? (laughs) Check them in. And she said, no, it works better for us the other way around. So I will never forget after one of the takes, you know, getting getting done with the scene, looking over, and there's my mom standing inside the warehouse. You know, this broken pane of glass. She's there, just just looking with a smile on her face, like she's the most supportive mom. I can do no wrong. Behind her are the two totally horrified looks on her friend's face. Like, what am I doing here? Who is this person who made me come here and watch this? Um, yeah, my mom lost a couple of friends. Not those two friends, but she did lose some friends because they went and saw the movie McGruber. <laughs> They've never come back in her life. That's what a great mom she is. We, we should uh, make sure that your mom's friends come to the 10th anniversary screening when we eventually do it uh, oh, yeah. you know, later this year. Without my mom my mom's an a actor in the movie she was uh in the very end in the uh uh the the wedding scene she is uh colonel faith um played by powers booth uh the, the late powers booth which we're super bummed out about he was a fantastic man but she is uh uh colonel faith's wife so she's she's uh sitting there in her front row of the seat watching it all. Um, 
Uh, I have a million other questions, but I have to uh, what we call um, stop. Um, so I will uh, save these for another time. Um, I will say, though, for people that are watching, uh, Quibi is now available on iTunes and the, uh, on Google Play. Uh, you can download it. You get the app. And then I believe it is uh, it's free for 90 days. So everyone yeah. watching, if you want to see if you want to see flipped uh, and they have I think they're planning on 175 series uh, this year. Um, you should check it out. Um, and, you know, the There's first few episodes of Flip. Cool yeah, a bunch of cool stuff coming out. And I think that 90 day trial period there, you need to get in at a certain point, maybe. So I, I can't remember the date, but maybe like if you get in by April 20th, you have 90 days. For, I can't remember. Just go there. Go to Quibi. Sorry. Sorry. I cut you off. No, no. I, I think it's better if you're if you're mentioning it. I'm just saying for people that want to check out Flipped, you can go watch it for free by going to Quibi and signing up and um, and you'll laugh. And I, as I said, I saw the first few episodes and I will absolutely continue watching. Awesome. Um, thank until thank you so much for getting on uh, on this video chat with us today. Uh, please, uh, I hope everything with you and your family uh, stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you so much for giving us your time today. Thank you very much. It's great to talk to you, and, and I wish the same health and safety to you and to everyone out there who's uh, listening and who's not listening. All the best. Uh, cool. Hey, listen, thank you so much. And, um, uh, you know, a 10th anniversary MacGruber screening later this year. Yeah, awesome. Sounds good. Cool. Have a great